In this episode, we're going to hear three very weird and strange encounters. But before we get to the stories, I want to mention there are two new channels of mine that you should definitely check out. The first is Donovan Dread 2, where I release the same great content, just a little shorter in length. Then there's Dread Captures, where we analyze various encounters that were captured on video, that were sent in to us, or that are available online. So if you're digging my content, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll keep narrating these creepy encounters. Now let's get to the stories. I had a long career as a home caregiver. Home health aid, or whatever they call it now. There were fewer titles when I started. I have a lot of stories to tell. Weird things happen in homes of the sick and the dying. Sometimes it felt like I was following the unexplained as I passed through the doors of a new client. That's why I was always a step behind, always reacting to the weird happenings instead of preventing them. The strangeness got there first. I was playing catch-up with the supernatural. My responsibilities included housekeeping and running errands as well as bathing, dressing, and grooming any clients who were incapable of such on their own. I was never involved in any formal treatment or medication. My clients were either healthy enough to avoid constant medical attention or were terminal and had elected to forego any further treatment. My company called them long-term or short-term patients. Kind of cruel, but it was at least accurate. The story I want to share today is about a short-term patient, and it's about a dog. When I listed my responsibilities earlier, you'll remember that pet care was not among them. I was never asked to take care of dogs or cats or any other family pets. By the time I arrived at the home, the client had already learned that they were in no condition to take care of an animal. That was not the case here. Upon arrival, I entered the modest single-story home with a key my company provided. I called out as instructed and loudly introduced myself. The woman of the house, I've been told, was hard of hearing. She didn't speak much either, although I learned that after the fact. I found her in a room. She spent most of her time there, using a metal walker to alternate between her recliner and her bed. She was thin, pale, and kind of greenish looking. She had a head of wiry white hair that bunched up into a ball of tight curls. There was always a pair of elegant earrings in her ears. Her appearance, ultimately, was not that out of the ordinary. I know greenish looking sounds cruel or monstrous, but, but I assure you that with some conditions, it becomes quite normal. What was abnormal, I noticed after some time, was her earrings. I don't know where they came from. Every day a new pair. I'd help her with her bath and her wardrobe. I'd leave to make her first meal of the day, and when I returned, earrings. I assume the most basic of explanations. She was a distrustful older woman who didn't want her caregiver rummaging through her jewelry. Fair enough. What I could not explain was the dog. After that first day of work, I put the woman of the house to bed and prepared to leave. I'd be back in just 10 hours. I was eager to get home. When I opened the front door to step onto the porch, there was a large black dog waiting for me. It ran. I only saw a muzzle and a flash of mangy dark fur. A neighborhood mutt, I assumed. Maybe my client fed the animal before their condition took a turn for the worse. I silently agreed to watch out for the dog in the future and locked up for the night. Things were pretty normal after that. I cooked and cleaned and watched the reruns of her favorite 90s television shows. One night, roughly a week in, I heard the dog. I heard pitter-patter of claws on the kitchen tile floor. I ran, of course, to see what kind of animal had snuck its way into the house, but I found nothing. A quick check of the windows, and sure enough, I saw that dog running into the night. But how had it gotten inside? The windows were locked and the doors were all bolted. I made sure of it. My imagination, maybe. Maybe I heard it walking across the porch outside and thought the sound was closer than it was. I told myself that the streak of mud in the kitchen had come from my boots and not from something else. The next day, my client was noticeably more ill bedridden from dawn to dusk, and they stayed that way for days. After laying her down early one evening, as she asked to sleep at more and more frequent intervals, I resumed a few of the cleaning tasks that I neglected throughout the day. This time, I saw it, unmistakably inside, waiting for me at the end of the hallway. It looked like a retriever, except for the matted black hair. 
The coat was short and curly, the snout long and eyes bright. I yelled and stepped toward it. Yet again, it fled. I tried to chase the animal to see how it was sneaking in and out of the house. But as soon as I reached the end of the hallway, it was gone. Muddy tracks carved a path through the house, but ultimately faded into nothing. I said it earlier, I was playing catch up, always one step behind. I called my company and asked about the dog. I contacted a few distant family members of my client and asked around the neighborhood. No one knew the origins of this animal. Animal control went through the house that week and verified that there were no visible entrances of any animal, let alone an adult dog. Since the last sighting, though, the lady of the house had gotten worse. She didn't leave the bed anymore. I thought my time with her was coming to an end. Even if it was, I cut our time even shorter. One night, I entered her room, and the dog was on her chest. I saw it, and as the light from the hallway touched its body, it vanished. I stood in shock, staring at my sleeping client under her sheets, staring at the muddy paw prints on her blanket. I requested a transfer the next day. I don't know what ultimately happened to that woman. Maybe that makes this story less rewarding than it could be. But taking care of pets wasn't in my job description, and neither was chasing ghosts around a house. I chose to get out of there, and because of that, I have this and many other stories to tell. You can tell me if I made the wrong call. What I'd really like to know, however, is if anyone else has seen a dog like that. I lived in New York City my entire life. I grew up on the Lower East Side. We have a lot of pride down there, and we weren't afraid to show it. I've always loved the city, and as a kid, we thought we were the biggest stuff. I remember nodding to the police officer on our block and getting the nod back. That made me feel like such a big shot. Living in the city means that you will see some really weird stuff. It's completely unpredictable. Sometimes it's cool and happy like the big parades and New Year's celebrations. Sometimes it's just plain sad, like when you hear sirens start going off in the middle of the night and never stopping. It's a big city with a lot of weird stuff in it. I remember the first time I thought I saw something weird. It's nowhere near as strange as what I'm actually writing to you about. No, this one is small potatoes compared to that, but I'm going to start with the small story and build it up. I was out biking with my buddy, and it was really hot out. Our air conditioner wasn't working, so riding bikes around was basically the only way to feel any relief from the hot air. August in the city is really stifling with all the heat reflecting off the pavement and the buildings. Anyways, we were biking when I saw something in the storm drain. It was like two yellow floating lights peeking out at me. Did you ever see that movie, It? Yeah, it was like that stupid clown demon thing in the gutter, but just yellow eyes. I was riding my bike fast and didn't get a great glimpse of it. I really didn't think I thought much of it as a kid. I remembered it immediately after this last encounter, though. That bike incident happened like 20 years ago. I ended up getting a pretty good job right out of high school. I never went to college, though. School just wasn't my thing. I tried to study hard, but it never came easy. Maybe I have some bigger issue in my head, and that explains why I see these weird things. I don't know. I'm just trying to grasp at any possible semi-logical reason. Anyways, the real Big Potatoes story. So out of high school, I started working. I started working for the New York City sewer utility as basically a grunt worker. It kind of sucked, but I got health insurance, and it was pretty decent pay. We didn't have much money growing up, so it was a pretty good job. Eventually, I got good at my job, and the bosses noticed that. They say hard work pays off, and it sure did for me. I eventually got upgraded to an inspector, and have basically worked by myself ever since then. New York City has a sewer system called a combined sewer. About 60% of all the sewers in the city are this combined sewer. And that means that all the little sewers and drains that come out of the buildings feed into one really big pipe. I spent a lot of time alone in those really big pipes, making sure that they'd be ready in case of a big storm, like Superstorm Sandy. So this really brings me to the whole reason why I'm writing to you now. I was down in one of these big combined drains all by myself, just like any other day. I was having a good time that day and moving pretty fast. I wanted to get out of work early to take my mom to the doctor. These combined sewers were usually pretty dry, unless it's right after a big storm or something. It hadn't rained in a week or two, 
so it was unusual that this combined sewer had the amount of water in it that it did. It was a solid two or three feet of extra water. And that's the first weird thing that stuck out to me. The second weird thing that stuck out to me was there was obviously something moving around in the water. I had to deal with this before. People's cats fall down the drain, or a raccoon gets stuck, or something like that, and I have to call animal control to have them remove it. I thought that's what all the ripples were. It's pretty dark down in those sewers, but I could tell that whatever was moving in that water was bigger than a raccoon or a household pet. I tried to shine my light on it, and when I did, I saw something really weird. It was scaly and spiny and moving fast through the water. I totally froze when I saw that, with all the stories of the alligators in the sewers coming into my head. I beamed my light on and watched it as it moved down the sewer tunnel. Eventually, the angle wasn't right and I couldn't see it anymore. There was lots of debris in the water, and I really second-guessed myself, thinking maybe it was a branch or something. I know that it wasn't because of what I saw next. Remember those yellow eyes I'd seen as a kid, looking at me out of the sewer? I swear they were looking at me again, like a hundred feet away, straight out of the darkness, and it wasn't just one set of eyes. I swear I counted five sets of them, all yellow, staring straight out at me, making eye contact with me. I'm pretty sure I saw one of them blink. I had never moved so fast through a sewer tunnel. I went up that ladder across the parking lot and right into my truck. My heart was pounding as I sat in my truck. I got another inspector to check out that tunnel with me. He swears he didn't see anything. This is maybe why I think I have something wrong in my head. I can't find any explanation to what I saw. I've always been sensitive to things that others can't see or hear. My mom used to think I was just making up stories to scare my siblings, but I wasn't. Growing up, we all had chores. We were a big family. I was the oldest of six kids. It was just normal to have chores, and being cranky about doing them was pretty typical, too. This particular night, though, nothing was typical. I was washing dishes, minding my own business. Everyone else was in bed, which was pretty normal. I wasn't able to do my chores until after the kids went to sleep, because so much of my time was spent with helping them. I kept hearing heavy footsteps behind me, which I tried to ignore. I knew that it wasn't anything that I could control, so I ignored them. Even though I had a pit in my stomach, I just kept working. I was so used to the strange and unexplainable things happening that I refused to let it phase me anymore. I told my mom about the weirdness several times before, but she just blew me off. She would tell me that I have a vivid imagination. But that night, things changed. The footsteps had started getting heavier. Whatever was making them was angry. But I still refused to turn around. Soon, the footsteps were right behind me, and I was struggling to ignore them. I knew they were there. I knew it was angry. It didn't like being ignored. I continued to focus on the last few dishes I had. I was close to being done and able to head myself to bed. As I rinsed the last pan, all of the cabinet doors flew open. I gasped and jumped, spinning around and searching the room for anything that could have caused it. Of course, there was nothing there except my mom in her doorway glaring at me. I quickly explained that it wasn't me, and I closed the cabinets apologizing for the noise. She sighed and sat down in the recliner. Apparently, she was going to watch me finish my chores because of the noise. I had just started wiping down the countertops when the footsteps started again, racing back and forth behind me, getting louder with each pass. I looked over at my mom, who looked incredibly confused, but before she could finish her thought, Every cabinet door flew open and every drawer slammed open. I yelped and jumped away from the sink, shaking as I tried to calm down. I had dealt with the footsteps for months, but this was the first time it had ever gotten physical with anything substantial, and I didn't know what to expect. Even though I was scared, I closed all the cabinets and drawers, hoping that this was the last activity for the night. But as soon as I stepped back to the sink to rinse my rag in my hand, The drawers flew open and dumped all over the floor. This time I screamed. The knife drawer was closest to the sink and narrowly missed my bare feet. My mom jumped up and ran into the kitchen. She was obviously shaken. We didn't speak as we started to put the kitchen back together. I don't think there were words for what we were feeling. 
I knew that she hadn't believed me, but how could she deny what she witnessed with her own eyes? As we finished putting the last of the silverware back in the drawer and the drawer back in its track, I asked, do you believe me now? She nodded and wiped her hand on her pants. I let her know I would finish up and she could go on to bed. No need for us both to be terrified. No sooner did my mom shut her bedroom door and the footsteps started again. But this time, I spun around and asked, What do you want? Why are you messing with me? Of course, I didn't expect a response. It just made me feel better to say it out loud. What I didn't count on was seeing a figure standing there. He was about six feet tall, had on an old business suit, like the ones you see in old westerns and a top hat. He was there, but he wasn't if that makes sense. I could see him, but I could also see the table through him. He only looked at me for a moment, and then he started pacing again. I couldn't move. I was just watching him as he paced back and forth. I wasn't sure what to do, but I didn't want to draw any more attention to myself. It was only a few minutes before he just disappeared. One second he was there, and the next he was gone. That was the only time I ever saw the man, but I heard his footsteps every night until we moved. At some point, they just became a normal part of my night. I never ignored him again, though. When I would hear him start pacing, I would always say hello. I knew that he could mess with physical objects, but he never did again. I'm not sure if that's because I acknowledged him or if he just didn't find the answer he thought he would by scaring me. I still can't believe what I saw all these years later, and sometimes I still wonder if I dreamed it all up. I hope that if you read this, someone can relate and will let me know that they believe me. Because even though my mom helped me, she never once talked about it to me. So I've been left knowing this happened, but not knowing how much of my memory is exaggerated. I know it sounds crazy. I really do, but I needed someone else to hear my story and possibly understand. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you think of these stories in the comments below. Don't forget that you can listen to my episodes on any of your favorite podcasting platforms. I try to upload every single day on this channel and on Donovan Dread 2, where I release shorter content. Same great encounters, just a little bit shorter. Also, if you want to see crazy encounters captured on trail cams, then check out Dread Captures. It's part of the Dread Network, where we go over live footage of very strange encounters that are sent into the Facebook group or videos that are circulating on the web. Last but certainly not least, check out Lilith Dread. She releases the same great content daily on her channel. You'll find all these links below. Thanks and take care.